Welcome to CaesarBusiness.com's podcast and video blog. Uh, my name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law. Uh, my radio partner Jim Wazak from Success Enhancement couldn't be here today, but our guest is Saad Youssef from Plago Technologies, and our topic today is going to be automating the sales process. So Saad, thanks so much for uh, joining welcome. me today. Thank you for having me. appreciate it. So tell me about uh, Plago Technologies. Well, Plago Technologies is a, a software application development company. We are based right here in Downs Grove, next to Flaherty Law. I've <laughs> uh, been here about for about five years, but we've been in business for about 15 years. Started in 2002, so 14 and a half years. Um, we started off building web simple websites. We started off doing wireless networking and, uh, and so on, but we really evolved into an application development company. Uh, we were in Westchester for, from 2002 through 2012. Uh, we uh, specialized in uh, building like uh, uh, software applications for our, for our corporate clientele, such as uh, ERP systems. What's an ERP system? Enterpo enterprise resource planning. So it kind of runs your entire business. Your, it handles your inventory. It handles your uh, product, uh, uh, product information, your uh, employee information. Basically, enterprise, enterprise resource planning. So, so it basically yeah, automates yeah. the back end of, of the business for people. Absolutely. Um, another thing we did was uh, e-commerce websites. Um, I, I'm sure you're familiar with, you know. A uh, lo lo lot of uh, businesses came to us, small businesses, you know, who couldn't, uh, you know, uh, afford, you know, kind of to go to the big boys downtown. So they kind of came to us and said, you know what, we need, to, we're, we're a small to mid-sized business. We have products we want to sell online. How can you help us? So we were able to do that pretty well. So you can, you can, I, a lot of people, when they think about building apps for their, their business sure. to make their business more fit. And I'm not talking about web apps necessarily to, to sell to people, but apps just to, to make your business more efficient internally. A lot of people think, well, that's something that, you know, you got to be, you know, GE or Chrysler or something in order no, to absolutely, be able to afford. No, absolutely so, not. So you can cater customized for smaller businesses? Uh, we, we absolutely can. We, we, we have, we have um, solutions already in place where we can customize for you. Uh, we have, um, for example, if you want to customize your... Uh, customer relationship management. If you have a sales process but it's completely disorganized, you have everything in spreadsheets or just you know, emails going back and forth and you can't really track your leads or you can't track your, uh, your process from converting a, a contact to a lead to a customer, we can help you kind of manage that process um, with, the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the not with a minimal investment. You know, we're not going to invest you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, uh, we we can get you up and running, you know, pretty pretty efficiently and uh, pretty cost effectively. So what are uh, you know? There's uh, there's a lot of CRM systems out there. You know, there's there's Salesforce and PipeDrive and a bunch of different pieces of software. Sure. When would someone have you kind of customize something for them rather than just using, um, you know, one of the generic out of the box? Uh, like explain some of the things that you've done for clients in that. Well, area. what we really do is uh, we define the customer's process, their sales process. So, for example, one customer of ours is a home builder. They're a prominent home builder in the Wisconsin area, and they have uh, fr franchises all over the Midwest. And they have a very specific sales process. Uh, what they have is you have you have your contacts, you know. So they have anybody they've ever met, anybody the builders ever met who's kind of. They might have come come to a uh, a uh, a trade show or whatever, and they've expressed, you know, hey, I might build a house one day. Mm -hmm. That's a contact. Those people go into your email marketing, your email blasts, and your campaigns. You can have, you constantly keep in touch with them. Then they have another um, item in their process called leads. So a lead is anyone that you know has shown some sort of interest, you know, uh, shown, shown a, uh, a leaning towards getting into the home building process. Sure. So that's where you continue. That's where you prospect the lead. You, you grade the lead. You kind of understand. Okay, where is that person in the process? So you know, we we, we what we did was we set up a bunch of customized questions and create our own algorithm. So for example, for a home builder, you know, some questions they ask are, does this person already have own land? Yes, that's positive. No, then that's a negative. Does this person already have financing? Does it does he already have cash on hand? And all the all those questions are asked. Does he already have plans? Does he have blueprints? And when, when you mark all those questions down, our custom algorithm says, okay, this person is more than a lead. He's a prospect now. Yeah. Or, hey, this person is still kind of, he's warm, but, you know, not there yet. Let's keep him in the lead's bucket. So all that stuff, you're not going to get from Salesforce. It's mm -hmm. just out of the box. It's, you know, standard generic questions about your customers. But if you have a business that has a, a defined sales process, 
that needs to be automated, we can definitely help you out. Okay. And you know, for things like Salesforce, you're going to pay a monthly fee for that. I assume if you're if you're building the software, you pay something up front, mm -hmm. and then you know that that's that, and you might actually save money in the long run, right? Absolutely. So Salesforce, they'll, they'll charge you per user per month. So I don't know how much it is. Last time I checked, maybe it's fifty bucks per user. Uh, let's put it that way. If you have twenty users, right? You you times twenty times fifty times twelve months, it adds up. It is a constant cost. What would we, what what I would use is something like Sugar CRM. Sugar CRM is an open source uh, uh, CRM tool. It comes out of the box with standard uh, you know um, CRM applications. You know, but we we can customize that because because it's open source. We can get in there. We can program it. So you spend a little bit of money up front customizing this application, but then it's yours to own. And the only time you you spend money on it is to enhance or upgrade it, you know, if you want to add some features to it or apps, add some... And that's something yeah. you can do. Absolutely. People can tweak the application and, and build upon it and, as they go along and learn more about the way their business works, right? Yes, of course. I, it, it's always going to happen. You think you want something, but then in practice you start using the system, okay, maybe we should have done it this way or maybe we should have this and, oh, it would, it would be better if we did it this way. It, it, it keeps going, but it goes in a positive direction where... It's uh, you're, you're continuing to enhance and make your uh, sales process more efficient. So what's uh, what's the process of working with you like? What you know, if someone comes up to you and says, you know, I, I'm thinking about sure. you know, say they're a prospect of yours <laughs> that I'm thinking about uh, getting this automated sales system. What can you do for me? How does it work? Well, I mean, what we do is we have a five a, a five stage process, and what you're referring to is kind of an, an analysis phase. Mm -hmm. So someone comes to us. You know, you're thinking about doing some work for us, so we can like, come into an agreement saying, "Hey, you know, we'll work with you. We'll definitely, you know, uh, sorry about the train in the background. <laughs> we'll, um, we will uh, understand what your requirements are, and you want, why don't you hire us for a preliminary engagement? You know, so we can kind of get an understanding of what you need. And after that preliminary engagement, which is kind of an analysis phase, what we do is we come out with a firm price for you as to how much your system will cost. So we'll sit down with you." We'll go over your entire process as it is now, what you currently do. You you define to me, you know, okay, this is what we need. This is this is what our processes are. This these are the main players, the main uh, uh, stakeholders in in the, in the process, and these are the people who will be using our application. We take all that information into in account, and we kind of understand, okay, so based on your based on your uh, uh, statements requirements, this is what we think will need to be done. So when that is done, you know, we're able to give you a firm price, okay, for, you know, for X amount of dollars, we'll give you X, Y, and Z. Uh, okay, you agree with us, then what we do is uh, we start the project by going to a design phase. Based on your requirements, we design the entire application out. We, we give you wireframes, we give you visual designs, we design the backend database, all the fields, everything in and out. And, and before we even do a, a line of code, all those designs, kind of like blueprints, kind of like a building a house, sure. all those blueprints are there for you, to for you to approve. Okay, this is what we want, go ahead, sign the dotted line. Only then do we sign, uh, do we start development. Okay. So then, then you have, of course, have the development process where we go in there and, you know, we, we, we hammer away at whatever we design. Then you, come, then you come back in during the QA process. So you, you want to make sure that whatever we promised you is functioning exactly the way you envisioned it. Or maybe if it's not, you know, we can tweak it kind of work with you a little bit back and forth there, mm -hmm. and of course then uh, we go ahead and launch. Okay, so tell me a little bit more, you know, since the topic is about automating sales, tell me more about some systems you've designed and how they how they actually work to make the salesperson or the business owner's life a little easier. I mean, you talked about the, the different parts of the sales funnel, the, the sure. uh, contacts, leads, mm -hmm. and prospects, but what are some things that people have done in their, in their automated CRM systems that you've prepared that kind of make their life a little easier and, and get value from the system? Well, what we've done is define roles, you know, um, because like for what, another company of ours, you know, you had a sales team, you had a, uh, a, uh, a, a production team that estimates the cost and everything. So what we did was, instead of everybody seeing everything going on and it being a big mess, you know, because sometimes too much information is a bad thing. So you, you have your, your on the ground sales guy, you know, just knocking on doors and trying to get leads. He doesn't need to see, you know, uh, how much is being built out or how much is being proposed. He's just getting the lead in and getting into the next stage. So what we do is we, we, we really define the, define the roles. And that's, so, that's really important. You know, you, you, you pick your team, you give them certain roles, you have them do that role 
excellent, you know, and hand it off to the next guy. And you have one person over, a few people overseeing the entire process. Sure. So when you have that in place, it kind of defines what a person's supposed to do. Uh, no one's stepping on each, other, each other's toes. Um, if you're just sending emails back and forth, or if you have spreadsheets that you're sharing, or if you got just a very uh, out of the box generic system where there aren't any roles or anything like that, then it, it can get very confusing. Sure. So what we do is we we streamline the process. We give the people who are working on it tunnel vision to the, the to their specific tasks, and when it's handed off, then they don't need to worry about it. They continue in the job, you know. And it, it really works out well that way. Well, I think probably the biggest advantage that you can give people with this, at least from my perspective, is when you are handing off the baton to a different part of your team, making sure that the baton doesn't get dropped, and having some checks, and people Absolutely. checking checking to make sure that things are being done appropriately in that transition. Like, you know, for example, we have a we have a business development team that's going out and networking and, and meeting with people, and they might get somebody that refers a client to us, and we want to make sure that when that process happens, that they're credited with bringing that client in, and that... Uh, an initial consultation is scheduled, and if a consultation isn't scheduled, there's a follow-up set. And then once the, the consultation happens, you want to make sure that you've gotten the attorney retention agreement and payment, and that's been passed off to the attorney that's actually going to do the work. And that's a lot of little steps and a lot of opportunities for something to go wrong, for you know someone not to get credit for bringing the business sure. in, or you know maybe a follow-up doesn't happen when it's supposed to. But if it's all in an automated system, you can basically have a red flag when mm -hmm. something's going wrong. And you mentioned you know, like follow-ups and that kind of stuff. You, you, we can create you custom dashboards, you know? So you can see what follow-ups do I have today. You, you open your system up, home page, boom. I have 10 follow-ups today. I make these calls, okay? Uh, how many follow-ups do, do I have this week? Um, how many meetings do I have this week? And you, and, you know, and you can, as a manager, see your entire organization, or you can, as, as an uh, individual, you can see your own follow-ups. So it's, it, it can, that's why the role is important. Managers can see everything. Individuals see their own thing, so all that stuff. There's so much accountability put into it that uh, it's really hard to drop the ball without getting noticed. I think the dashboard for me as a business owner is the most attractive mm -hmm. thing because I have you know about twelve employees in different departments with different roles, and to have something that I could just log into on my phone, you know, if mm -hmm. I'm if I'm out of the office or just log into in the morning and be able to see, okay, these are the things that this employee was supposed to accomplish and you know it looks like they're on track or oh there's there's some red flags here I need to check in and make sure yeah. this process isn't breaking down that's really helpful for someone who's managing you know 12 employees because there's no way on a on a daily basis I can go in and check in with everybody but if exactly. I've got an automated dashboard uh, that's not relying on the employees um, you know telling me if something's mm -hmm. going wrong or something's getting behind that's a really valuable resource and, and a big key in that is establishing the culture where they have to update their information in the CRM because it, they can do all the work and they can just be lazy about you know checking a box in the CRM or adding their notes in there and then it's basically garbage in garbage out so if you're not putting the right kind of information in to uh, get that feedback then it all falls apart so um, what I tell people is it's really, it's really important to get the CRM built, but it's extremely more important to establish a culture where if you don't update your information in the CRM, then then it's not going to work. So yeah, and we we've had that problem. I mean, we we use something like that for for our sales, and the the problem that we always have is if if one person in the on the whole team isn't good about mm -hmm. actually inputting the data. Then nobody can trust any Your of the data. Your data isn't accurate, exactly. And exactly. it's it, it's a, that's a difficult thing. And we've done a couple of podcast episodes on getting buy-in and, and mm -hmm. managing change. I think that the last episode we did was about that. And that I mean that's that's the hard part. You know, paying you know a couple thousand dollars to get the system built. That's that's an easy thing to sure. do for a business owner. But actually. Uh, Getting your team to buy in is, is difficult. Do you do you do trainings and stuff? Absolutely, or, okay. constantly. Because um, um, and, and a lot of times, you know, like the home builder, a lot of blue collar, you know, folks who, who really aren't used to using computers. You know, so mm -hmm. it it really is a challenge to get them to buy in and use their phones or use their laptops to really uh, stay up to date with their information. And you get a lot of questions. You get a lot of uh, a lot of pullback. You know. A lot of people saying, "Oh, the spreadsheet was easier," you know, whatever, you know, that, 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 those kind of comments, you know, mm -hmm. where it's like they don't understand the true value of it until well, only someone in management would really understand. Okay, this is so important because 
everyone's you know putting information in the same area. But sometimes the guys in the ground, you, they, you need them to buy in first. Yeah, they they always want to make that next call rather than exactly. reporting the results. The Absolutely, last one, and that, that's difficult. So if someone uh, wants to reach you and uh, have you help them with this or a website or any other sure. software, how can how can they reach you? Uh, www.plego.com, P-L-E-G-O.com, or call us at six three zero. Five four one seven five four one. And these guys are my next door neighbors. They've been very good neighbors. Put up with a lot of uh, parties <laughs> in our office uh, for the past. You know, it's been like four or five years, years now. Uh, so I, I, they're great guys. And if you want to find them, you can always just come to where our Downers Grove office is located. Come by, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll lead you to our door. No problem at all. Well, well, thank you so much, Todd. It's been great yeah, having yeah. you. And if you wanna, if you wanna contact me for an initial consultation, you can call. Uh, 630-324-6666. Uh, also check out more podcasts and video blogs on our website, seizeyourbusiness.com. And I also do a, a weekly legal podcast video blog and, and a weekly article at learn-about-law.com. Thanks so much, Seth.